Entry-level mining information, safety. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And today I just want to have a quick chat to you about how safety's changed over the years. So when I first started, one of the responsibilities of the nippers and the truck drivers when they were watering down headings was to also hand scale it under unsupported ground. Now, when I asked one of the supervisors why this was so, he responded that if he sent the jumbo in to rattle down the heading, then it would take a lot of time that we'd miss out on, so we'd lose money that way. But also, if for some reason a rock came down and crushed one of the booms of the jumbo, that would cost half a million dollars to fix. Whereas if a rock comes down and crushes a truck driver, that only costs 280000 Now, that was a long time ago, but the big takeaway from that is the money. The money was the main thing that they were concerned about, and they were going to go with the cheapest option. And the reason that I say that is because in the the WA Mines Department's effort to improve conditions, they turned around, and this is out of the duties of employers out of the WA Mining Act. We've got it on the course to talk about it. But it's um, this bit here, they made it an actual uh, part of the act. So to provide and maintain workplaces, plants, and systems of work of a kind, so far as as practical, that the employers and the employees are not exposed to hazards. So they made it so the employers were directly responsible for the hazards on the work site. It took, unfortunately, until 2003, before the employers finally got the message that if we when we kill somebody it costs us a bucket load of money and if we can avoid doing that and if we can avoid hurting people then you know we're going to make more money it costs us money and the mines department to a certain extent went with that because they'd shut places down for a while if um, there was a fatality back in the day they've started to do that again There's, there's been a few fatalities around the place in the last 18 months unfortunately but up until then things had improved remarkably. It had been a good five years before we had a fatality underground. Now, one of the reasons that that is, is because people are a lot more aware of what safety is, and the employers being directly responsible have been required to train people. And that's the big thing, training people because the um, it's the skiller of the worker in the workplace. So the better trained that the person is, the better understanding that they're going to have of the job, the safer they're going to do that job. And by having to re-induct everybody and make sure everybody knows what they're doing when they get to site, that's been one of the major things that has improved safety over the last 20 years. Now, we've had a lot of problems in the industry in the past. One of them is... Um, trucks driving over utes i just want to play this one quickly for those that are thinking about jumping in a ute and driving around some of those driverless trucks on the surface um, in the iron ore mines i would caution you to this is probably well this will happen at some stage because there'll be an error somewhere and as you can see it doesn't take a lot to flatten the ute and the same thing used to happen in Hard Rock Underground. Unfortunately, this is the reason that reverse cameras were invented and enforced. And as you can see, it's not until the trucks on the actual ute that the truck driver would know that they're running over something. And they probably wouldn't think that they're running over a ute. They probably just think they're running over a a rock or something like that, because it doesn't raise up very high. But that's the main reason reverse cameras came in, because we had a lot of that going on. So as you can see, safety's come a long way in the last 20 years to the point now where when I first started, if there's a news article about deaths in the workplace, mining would have been right up there. Uh, You know, about 10 years ago, we dropped off the page to now when there's a article about deaths in the workplace, it's mainly construction and farming and um, other areas of the industry like that. Mining hardly ever gets a mention. That's because they've improved it so much over the years. And it really does go to show you that if you know how their mind works, you've got something to offer them and it really is an asset. And that's the driving force behind the sponsor's training is to teach you how the mind works so you're gonna know how to be safe from day one. If you want to have a bit more of a look at that, you can have a look at this page. It's the Entry Level Mining Jobs, the Best Shot series. goes through and talks about the different areas of the industry and some of the problems. So it talks about ticketing and why formal qualifications aren't used in Hard Rock Underground, why you have to be a 
permanent resident or a citizen to get a, a job in a hard rock underground mine because uh, it's all unskilled labour. It goes through and just talks about resumes and interviews and gives you all the knowledge that you need to make that training work for you. Because there's bucket loads of jobs around at the moment. If you type underground into Seek, you'll see them all come up. This page is bookended by burn cut wanting entry level um, people. And all the way at the bottom, it's got Bar Minko that want entry level people as well. It's easy to see when you look around and see the prices with copper coming in at $12,692 a tonne Australian. Nickel smashed through the 25,000 Australian mark and it's at 25,524 Australian a tonne. Gold's bounced back up to the 2,450 mark. Well, it's 2,447. Iron ores bumped up slightly and it's still going at $295 Australian a tonne. So everybody's making lots of money there. And lastly, coal has pushed ahead a bit more and that's at $178 a tonne and that's why there's a lot of coal mining jobs or not a lot of coal mining jobs going but a number of coal mining jobs going so experienced people jumping back into the industry as they bring production back online and start to ramp things up a little bit so I'm hoping that that um, price stays up there because that means there'll be a lot more activity but at the moment for your best shot to get into a mining job you can't go past the hard rock underground they're looking everywhere Every employer is having to put on new starters as truck drivers and nippers just because there's no experience around to fill the jobs. When you can show the employer that you know how the mine works, it's an asset in itself. It just means that you're going to be up to speed a lot quicker than everybody else will be, and it means that you're going to be a safe and productive member of crew. And the quicker you can do that, the quicker you'll um, go up the ranks and um, have a productive and a long-term career. So I hope you found that information interesting about safety. Like I said, it's come a long way since I first started from having to hand scale headings to now you're not allowed under unsupported ground um, and the jumbos do everything. So it just shows you that if you put the pressure on the employers to do the right thing, eventually they work out that it's in their best interest to do the right thing and make sure that they have as um, minimal accidents and hazards as possible on their mine site. And that's what's genuinely going on, especially over here in WA with our mines department, the way they police the underground mines here in WA. So if you could hit the like button, and share this information around. If you've got any questions that you want answered, please send them through. If you could subscribe to the channel. Thanks.